Okay, let's go on to our class. We'll continue on the book of Revelation. And we're up to Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 through 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength from the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers cast down, which accuses them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. So we're going to dissect this, uh, these uh, three verses here, starting with uh, verse 10. And let me repeat this. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The disciple hears a loud voice. What's the symbolism of the loud voice? The loud voice symbolizes a powerful awakening. In other words, um, when you get a revelation, you don't really hear a loud voice, but it is loud in the aspect that it wakes you up. Like um, uh, Scott was telling us about how he's got several downloads and, and uh, it kind of uh, wakes you up like a loud voice. And it says, now is the time of salvation. So now is always the time, not yesterday, not in the future, but now when it happens that you hear the still small voice or enter the stillness where you can communicate with your soul, it will be in the now as if there is no past or future, but only the now. Now the dragon stands in the way uh, and, and uh, the dragon represents the ego, which is the lower passions, uh, that which diverts you away from spirit. And then eventually the Christed one and the group prevail and center themselves on heaven and spirit and eventually they have to let go of the ego the ego is represented by this dragon the lower emotions tries to uh, uh, overcome your opening of your petals to your higher parts of yourself that's in your head your third eye that the uh, the center of the top of the head, he tries to uh, uh, infiltrate that. So when you take a step forward towards spirit, it is difficult for the disciple to stay centered there because sooner or later, the, the dragon of authority uh, pulls on him and creates some circumstance to shift his attention from heaven back to earth. Okay. When the dragon of zealous and illusionary aspiration is cast down uh, and the group allows the spirit to flow, a breakthrough happens and uh, several things appear here. Number one. We're told that there will be salvation or deliverance. So what does this mean when it says 
there will be, uh, it says, and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now is salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So the first thing is salvation or deliverance. So this happens instead of worshiping the lower nature and serving and uh, serving it. The disciples are free from its mastery and can finally choose the higher way of spirit. And so salvation for the disciple and his associates is in escaping the lower nature and focusing themselves on the higher. And the second thing, it says the disciple will have strength. So before the deliverance, the disciple and the outside gods were all powerful. But now for the first time, the disciple feels a uh, feeling of spiritual strength, strength that will be able to overpower the ego and the dragon of authority and the lower nature. The fourth thing indicated in this verse is the kingdom of God. So the dark and dreary world is like now a thing of the past. So no matter what is happening on the outside, the disciple discovers an inner peace and joy and he sees the kingdom of God within. And the fourth thing that mentioned in the verse is the power of Christ. Now, power in this verse comes from the a Greek word, asosia, uh, which is more appropriately translated authority. And here's a verse where this word was used. Speaking of Christ, it says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. That's a very interesting verse because he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes, but the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were the authorities. So uh, how, how was the authority of Jesus different than the other authorities that were recognized by the people? Because when the regular authorities talked, you were supposed to believe them because they knew the scriptures, they knew the will of God and everything. So, so you had to obey these authorities. But then it talks about Jesus. He had a different type of authority. He taught them as one having authority. How was his authority different? What do you think on that? His words were powerful they spoke to the soul like reading dk you can sense the intelligence there it has it carries carries something more than somebody just repeating what's already been taught something new yes uh it goes back to the two witnesses the words and the works are the most powerful authority that we have we have a pointed authority and somebody's appointed as an authority over you, um, and you're supposed to obey them because they're, they're an authority. Say you have your local mayor, he, makes all, he or she makes all kinds of decisions that affect you, and you have to go along with it. You have to go along, pay whatever taxes they come up with. But uh, that's a different type of authority. Jesus had an authority that was intrinsic to himself. So that when he spoke, he spoke to the soul and people could feel an effect that, hey, what he says has the ring of truth. Now, when you hear a preacher on TV preaching away, do you get that feeling? Boy, it really has a ring of truth to it, you know, or some politician telling us sacrifices we need to make to uh, for his cause. Uh, do we get that feeling, oh man, I, I really got some inspiration from that. But when Jesus talked, people felt the truth of his words register in their hearts and souls 
and it produced an authority that was beyond anything the scribes and the Pharisees and Sadducees and Jewish authorities or the Roman authorities had. His authority exceeded them because it's it spoke to people's souls. It's so, it's tricky though because the the solar plexus can confuse that, right? And a lot of people get a t tingly sensation in their leg when somebody speaks, but <laughs> it's 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 not the uh, it's not the true spirit. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's how regular authority keeps their base is they. Uh, they appeal to the solar plexus and politicians keep their authority because they promise us all kinds of free stuff. And people like that idea, so they keep them in authority, but they don't speak to their souls. And not everyone recognizes the voices that speak to their souls, but those who do, that authority is supreme. There's nothing that can exceed it. Now, uh, Thayer's lexicon makes an interesting uh, twist on this word, and it defines it as power of choice or like the liberty of one doing as he pleases. So in other words, the authority of Jesus allowed him just to go do whatever the devil he wanted to do. And you know, nothing upsets the regular authorities more than somebody that can completely ignore their authority and do as they please. Have you noticed that in real life, that you find somebody that can do as they please? Uh, Elon Musk is a, probably a good example of that. He does pretty much as he pleases. And uh, he has the wealth and the power to be able to do as he pleases. And it's really starting to disturb quite a number of people. Uh, a lot of politicians are calling for investigations and uh, looking into his business dealings, trying to find some something to uh, uh, get him with, because uh, uh, the guy does pretty much as he pleases. And this was the authority of Jesus. He did as he pleased, as he wanted to do, as he saw best to do, without regard to any outward authority telling him what to do. And uh, that really aggravated the authorities of his day. So I see Adam on the screen here. I could just imagine Adam having complete power to do whatever the devil he wanted to do. He would probably create quite a stir, I would imagine. Let your imagination go with that, Adam. I'll try to try to stay with within the confines of what a good citizen would do as well. But yeah, I'm sure I would ruffle a few feathers. Okay, the next uh, line here says the accuser of our brother is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Satan is called the accuser of our brother. Satan or the great dragon was in heaven was accusing all over the place and he he was he was cast down so so he couldn't accuse anymore but that didn't stop him from trying so this accuser of the brother this uh this this invisible devil shows up in the disciple's life in the life of people he's working with and they will accuse him of all kinds of things on an emotional level. Accuse him of being evil, accuse him of, like Jesus is a great example again. They accused him of, you're destroying our law, you uh, uh, are disobeying the Sabbath, you uh, uh, are upsetting people, and they accused him of all kinds of things. And then later they were accusing his disciples of all kinds of things, trying to uh, throw them in prison. Now, for the individual disciple himself, he will also accuse himself. He will be his own worst enemy. And uh, he accuses himself 
with residual guilt, uh, residual taking, uh, uh, not so much responsibility, but uh, uh, blame is the word. He takes blame for areas where he shouldn't be taking blame. And uh, this makes it hard for him to focus on the spirit because it makes him feel unworthy. So the one of the accusers of the brethren that ascends to heaven, in other words, to your highest thinking part of yourself, you will have thoughts there that uh, tries to place blame upon yourself, but you have to cast this serpent or devil, so to speak, this adversary that is accusing out of heaven or out from your higher consciousness. So you can stay in your higher consciousness. But then after this is accomplished, then the accusations still happen. There will be people in the disciples group that will surface and say, hey, you're not doing your job very good, or you need to do this, or, or uh, accuse them of maybe mishandling funds or something like that. So accusers come from his friends, accusers come from his enemies, and the accuser of the brethren or of the disciples that are engaged in the work come out of the woodwork all over the place. JJ? Yeah. I'm not following this part as far as uh, as far as the disciple is concerned. Can you give an example? Uh, I'm just not following this this particular, this last, uh, you know, five, six minutes that you've been talking about. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Well, for instance, when I was on the verge of a great revelation myself, I had an internal voice come to me and say, who do you are? You are nobody. Okay, so this was an accusation when I was younger that had a tremendous effect on me and made me feel like I was not worthy of receiving uh, anything from God. And uh, so you have, you have your in internal devils that uh, tell you that you, you are not good enough. And uh, a lot of people struggle with that and have to overcome that so they can see themselves as God sees them. And God sees us as his children that he loves. And we have to learn to see ourselves in that same loving attitude. Does that help at all or what? Yeah, that helps. That helps. Uh, I understand what you're saying now. Yeah. Except uh, I got to re, uh, reframe the God looks at us as his loving children in light of your new your new uh, concept of God. Yeah. Now you look at uh... Look, anyone that has children, we look on our children uh, with a loving attitude, even when they totally screw up. Even when they totally screw up, we still love them and accept them. And we have to be that way with ourselves, not, not allow ourselves to be accused by ourselves. There's plenty of people out there that are willing to accuse us if, if you're headed toward the light and doing a good work. But uh, the last person that should be accusing you is yourself and putting yourself down. So uh, this is a problem a lot of people have is they don't feel worthy or they put themselves down or they don't think they're good enough. And they're, they're their own devil, so to speak, that's accusing them and keeping them from uh, progressing higher. So but why... Why do why do people feel unworthy? I mean, I know why I do, but 
I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at is in the previous part, you're talking about the disciple who finally manages to listen to the, to the voice and put the lower ego aside. And so the disciple aligns with, with higher will and vibrates higher because the lower no longer controls. And so there's a balance there, right? Because yeah. those, those little peccadillos that get in our way are the things that cause us to then think about our unworthiness. Yeah, and you may be coasting along feeling great and then something will happen that uh, just completely upsets the apple cart and shifts your attention back to that uh, blaming thing again. And so it's, it's something that uh, you have to... Uh, it's a little bit like the uh, founding father said about uh, uh, freedom, that it's something that we must be vigilant to keep. We just can't obtain freedom and then just coast. You have to be vigilant about it. And you have to be vigilant about uh, uh, keeping a clear conscience, about not blaming yourself, about casting out that devil that can accuse you of not being worthy or not being good enough. So are you saying that's even more problematic than, you know, the, the little the little things that uh, maybe succumbing to lower desire here and there. Yeah, well, they're all problematic. We have a lot of things, uh, the lower desire nature, but when you succumb to the lower desire nature, then you maybe uh, give that inward devil the opportunity to say, see, you succumb to that lower desire nature, so you're not good enough. You know, so... Right. So, and some of the blame, um, you know, somewhat justified, a little, but a lot of it, it isn't. But even if it's justified, you just have to look at it like a mistake and, and then move on. Because uh, mistakes are just mistakes. And they can be ne negated. But also, it's not only the disciple himself, but those in his family, his friends, uh, they will come out of the woodwork to let him know that, uh, uh, well, you you can't really do this. You, you kind of, who do you think you are, you know, thinking that you can accomplish this this work? And it's not always a spiritual work. It may be maybe the guy just wants to create a business and and his family members think that he's not capable. And just even things like that kind of retain to some degree there <clears throat> yeah it's like jesus being called a wine wine biber right yeah wine bibber however you say that yeah he was called a wine bibber and a glutton uh, hard to imagine jesus being called a glutton but uh yeah he went and drank wine and ate and uh with a lot of people, uh, they invited him for dinner, and he went and ate with them, and probably enjoyed himself. Why not? Okay, and they overcome him, that is the dragon, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. So there's three ways to overcome this uh, enemy that is always accusing us, trying to make us feel unworthy. First of all, the blood of the lamb. The blood is a symbol of what? Life. Right, life. Blood is a symbol of life, and the lamb is a symbol of submissiveness. Okay? So, we submit to the Christ within. And uh, uh, the, uh, the life that, that springs from that inner contact gives us power to overcome the, uh, the red dragon, so to speak.
The second thing, the word of their testimony. Now, their testimony is manifest as the two witnesses or the words and their works. So we focus on your words being true and in alignment with spirit and your works being in alignment with that. So your works will be benevolent and constructive and your words will be true. These, this is, creates a great step forward in overcoming the dragon. Third, and most important, they love not their lives unto death. And the interesting thing in this life, we, um, in this time period, uh, most disciples don't have to give their lives. In past times, a, lot, a high percentage did have to wind up actually sacrificing their lives proving they didn't love their lives unto death. But what's another interpretation of not loving your life unto death? Besides, you know, okay, I'll give up my body to be burned or whatever. Uh, what, uh, what's another uh, interpretation of not loving your life unto death? Be uh, what I mean, go ahead. Be what many of you have done as far as uh, uh, leaving a religion that uh, all of your family and friends are in, and uh, and being somewhat uh, shunned in the process of leaving that because you're following what you believe to be is true and it is not that religion and, and, and the, uh, you're leaving that whole world behind and that includes your family and friends. And that, that, that is like a death. All right. That's a good point because life is more than just the physical body. Life is what you're living while you're here. And if you have to completely, uh, change, your lifestyle to be able to focus on the kingdom of God, then you you are not loving your life unto death. In other words, the opposite of the kingdom of God is death. You're, we're choosing the scriptures say between life and death at all times. So if we love not our life unto death, we will be willing to give up our old life and be born again, and that's where the born again come come adult, uh, idea comes into. We're born again. We become a new creature, as Paul words it, and uh, we love not that old life that leads us to the path of death, but we embrace a new life with new virtues, new goals. And most important of all, a new focus. And that's that's the core meaning that can apply to all of us. Okay, uh, any other comments on this before we wrap it up? We're about out of time here. I'm not gonna, I'll just make a quick comment and and not go into it. But I, I'm going through what you talked about today as far as uh, uh, I understand what you're saying now. And, and I'm going through that. And it and it cycles in and out of my life as far as with my children. And they have a powerful, powerful influence over me as far as uh, blaming me for their uh, station in life and 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 faulting me for for uh where they're at and that the pain and suffering you know that they experience and i i battle that and uh and i can battle through that and i cycle through it but then they 
it that is it, it's not just words that you're you're saying there that is a powerful influence that is that is a that is a uh powerful foe that has to be dealt with because yeah. it's going to come in different forms in different people's lives yeah it is powerful with family members especially children if chill if your children blame you for something they become the accuser of of the brother and you're the brother that's been accused and that's hard for a parent to take because he feels so responsible for them you look back upon them when they were born and how innocent they were and then they eventually get minds of their own and so yeah that uh, a spouse uh uh, your brothers and sisters, uh, good friends, they can come out of the woodwork and be accusers and make you, make you feel like you're not capable. And you have to be able to just let that brush off, just pass through you as if it does not exist and just forge ahead, just living life the best you can. And and that part right there, JJ, is so easily said. To do, but easy to say. Yeah. <laughs> that is easy to say. Yeah. That is. But that's what we have to do. And that's a tough lesson to learn. And everybody has, everybody that's trying to make something of their life and forge toward the kingdom of God will have accusers coming out of the woodwork that they have to neutralize so they don't have a negative effect on them. And uh, it's hard, but it can be done. 